Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel for another installment of our new figure showcase series. And today we'll be looking at the newest six scale figure being added to Damn Toys' ongoing Gangster's Kingdom line, and it is the Seven of Diamonds, aka Derek. So, I now have pretty much the entire line, and even with some issues here and there, this remains a personal favorite. Not sure what it is about these figures, but something about the line overall just caught my attention. And for those of you who have been following my channel, um, you know that basically, Damn Toys takes celebrities, athletes, directors, or even characters from movies, and drops them into this world they've created with the basic outlines of a story. So here, I don't think there's any doubt as to who this is supposed to be. It's clear that we're getting the Gangster's Kingdom version of 80s action superstar Jean-Claude Van Damme. And more accurately, I'm pretty sure this is based on his villainous turn in The Expendables 2, where he played the leader of a mercenary group taking on The Expendables. And his name in the movie? Jean Valon. A little on the nose on that one, if I do say so. Um, goes without saying though that I love those movies. They're so much fun and I think they're a great throwback to those 80s action movies. And it's always entertaining to watch. Although, as an aside, I do wish JCVD's final fight with Stallone had been a little longer, but that's a, a different topic. So before jumping into the figure, I have to say I'm not normally big on packaging. But the previous figures in the line have all had box, uh, boxes that do feel a little high-end and are really works of art in their own right. Best comparison would be uh, that they felt almost like a Hot Toys DX box with great foam padding, etc. That is until I got this one in hand. The material for the box itself fe feels much flimsier. And when you open it, the figure and all the contents are in your more conventional plastic trays. Look, it's not a deal breaker as most figures come this way, but it was a little surprising considering how the packaging on this line has been in the past. Just makes me wonder if this economy is hitting everyone, including Dan Toys, a little harder and they tried to cut uh, costs a little bit here. So with that quick observation out of the way, let's start by looking at the entire package we're getting here from Dan Toys. And while the packaging may be changing, this is another fully loaded release. So besides the amazing figure, you have a few weapons and some of them are pretty unique, which is nice. And then you just have a variety of little accessories here and there, including this massive punching bag, which doubles up as a torture device of sorts and all these little dynamic pieces. So it does feel again, like a nice release. So let's take a closer look at those accessories and we'll start things off with one of the basics, the hands. Now the figure does come with two extra pegs, so at least it makes things a little bit easier. And the figure does come with a pair of barehanded fists already on it. So you get an additional pair of bare hands for holding the guns and the knife. Uh, and then you get two sets of gloved hands that basically allow you to hold the array of weapons. And, and you do have an option here to essentially have the figure dual wielding firearms. Uh, detail wise, the bare hands look great and the gloved hands are awesome with detailing and texturing. Now you will see these two little fuzzy black pipe cleaner type things. And I think it's, um, it's pretty simple, but smart overall. And, and what they do is it lets you make the gloves look like they have a fuzzy cuff on it. So it's a nice touch and again, gives you options even with the gloves. So um, if you do rewatch Expendables 2, I think that the gloves do have that same cuff, uh, although it's a different color. Now, let's move on to the weapons, and we'll start with the rifle, which I haven't seen with any figures in the line yet. And it's a bullpup, bullpup style. And again, going back to the Expendables, very similar to the rifle that Jean Valon uses in that movie. Now, not a lot of moving parts to this one, which is a bit of a shame since Damn Toys usually goes a little above, but you do get some beautiful features here, particularly the paintwork, which is really made to stand out and i'm not sure if you can see this on camera i think you can but there's a slight grid that's ghosted in underneath the matte gray finish and it just gives the rifle a nice paint application that's very much on the unique side i do also like that the top rail is more of a silver metallic finish kind of breaking up the rifle overall but great detail work with the multiple rails and even the magazine has some nice uh, detail work to it Next up, he comes with a gold revolver, and I will say they did make this interpretation of, of the character a little more gaudy than he was in the movie, which we'll see more when we get into the figure itself. But the revolver definitely showcases that. It's really nice, and again, I, I don't think it's something we've seen before. Uh, it's a much more sleek piece with a very angular look to it, as well as some rails. And then you do get the wood hand grip, which is nicely painted to almost look like it has wood graining to it. The other associated piece it comes with is a quick load for the gun. And while I don't know that I'll be making much use of this. I can't deny the great detail work that went into this. Bullets look to be hollow at the tip with some grain work, so really good work uh, on this. 
And that last we weapon is the Bowie Knife. And again, if you saw The Expendables 2, you know that JCVD takes this from Stallone's character and uses it for what he calls a demonstration of power. Basically kicking the knife into the chest of one of the Expendables. So I, I think with all these, it becomes pretty clear what they're trying to give us, right? They're giving us a Van Damme version from that movie. Nice work though, with the hilt and the blade having a great uh, color app to it. And the sheath is a nice rubbery material, so no dreaded pleather deterioration here. Again, it's an interpretation of what we saw on screen, so not a complete recreation, but close enough. Now, outside of the weapons, we do get this green gun vault case that we've seen before with the Vincent and Kerr figures. Although here it includes foam padding for this vial that includes some green translucent panels to it to create the illusion of liquid within. Now, story doesn't say what this is other than that Derek is looking for two others and it's dangerous. So just another cool accessory. And I do like that cylinder. Um, it's unique and just welcome a welcome variety for accessories. Next, you get a very nice looking wristwatch a lit gold cigarette, and sunglasses. Here, the watch is by far the highlight. The band almost looks textured like alligator skin, maybe, and there is a plastic cover on the, on the dial of the watch that makes it feel more real. As for the cigarette, decent smoke effect, but I'm not sure he has the right hands to actually hold it. We'll have to see during the posing sessions. And of course, the sunglasses, which actually look pretty nice, and I think they might be a new sculpt, or at least one of the less often reused sunglasses from the line, which is nice. Now, before getting into the effect pieces, we have to look at the additional head sculpt that comes here, which is supposed to represent someone being questioned by Derek or his team. Now, clearly, whoever this is has been has seen better days since his face is swollen and one of his eyes is swollen shut. Detail work here on, on a piece that's a little gruesome still looks phenomenal. And even the open mouth showing the missing teeth does stand out. So we don't get a body here, but this will go hand in hand with the last accessory we'll look at. But first, let's get to these effect pieces that, again, really give the set a unique feel. And the first one we're looking at uh, is the green bottle breaking apart as a bullet comes out the side. Now, they made this look really incredible with the bullet coming out one end, leaving a trail of spewing liquid behind as the bottle itself shatters in its wake. So it just looks impressive. The other piece you get is this more amber colored effect piece that just sits on the skull. We looked at previous uh, that sits on the scope we looked at previously, and it gives you the impression that Derek has essentially shattered a bottle over the character's head. So very nice opportunities here. And finally, you get this small piece that fits into the previous portrait's mouth, and it's supposed to simulate um, his teeth being essentially kicked or punched out. I know, again, a little bit on the gruesome side, but very unique overall, and I do like the, the red kind of spurt with the, the little white pieces that are supposed to represent the, the teeth. And all this goes hand in hand with the final accessory, which is the punching bag, which actually comes disassembled in the packaging with a foam insert that has to be dropped into the bag. And it works well, and basically you're supposed to assume there's someone in here with their head sticking out. It's a big piece, and also really nicely done with all the blood splatter and the, the actual metal chains uh, above. Now, I do think this would have benefited from having some kind of a stand included to let you hang um, the bag from the chains, because unfortunately, right now, th those pieces just kind of drape down on top and get lost but it could be an interesting project to take on so overall i think it's a pretty solid package now let's shift over to the figure and we'll start with the sculpt and again as you look at him you can see the stylized features although again what i've noticed in these recent releases is they're not nearly as caricaturish as some of the previous or earlier figures in the line but there's no doubt again here that this is an older jcpd Everything looks great as a standard with the line. There's amazing detail work on his eyes and the paintwork on his cheeks and even the stubble on his face are just top notch. Even the ears and the hair look great. Damn Toys always kills it with the sculpts, although they probably do have a little, um, they benefit a little bit from not having to be 100% accurate to the person they're trying to recreate. Now, let's look at the rest of the figure and start with the clothing. And this is where he definitely differs from that film uh, counterpart of his. And Damn Toys basically made him, again, I'm going to use the word again, uh, more gaudy. Um, he just feels that way. First of all, you have to start with the jacket, which is a very velvety feeling material, maybe like a faux fur. And it does look unique and shiny. And it also has a belt with a metal buckle. Um, his undershirt, too, is this shiny... It's almost gold, but in the light, it looks almost blue as well. Um, 
it's this button down shirt tailoring on these again is just incredible and then you look at the pants and they're full fabric but there's a pattern to them uh, almost like a marbling that makes it feel maybe leather like um without having the the pleather issues right and it all culminates in these great boots which again is typical with dan toys um there's a lot of great detail work even at the soles so i always do like that attention to detail and overall it just feels like the tailoring is always on point and does offer a nice variety of options so i'm really happy with this one i think it's another solid effort from dan toys and a great addition to the line and also the fact that it's jean claude van damme just elevates the awesomeness now there are some issues although some of it could be a result of my lofty expectations but yeah um the first one he can't do full splits i tried but just doesn't work so um i didn't try too hard right i didn't want to rip any of the, the the pants or anything but um would have been a nice feature, but that's that's more of a wish list kind of item. But all kidding aside, there are design decisions here that I'm not happy about. And the biggest one, they gave him single jointed elbows. I don't know why they continue to do that. The early figures in the line all had double jointed elbows, and there was a great flexibility there to your poses. And, and the figures could really hold some natural stances. Now, I know Dan Toys knows military figures. That is one of their fortes, and, and it's probably one of their biggest um, additions to the market and, and they apply a lot of that knowledge to these figures but why they're reverting back to single jointed makes no sense to me maybe they think people might want to display the figure with just a tank top or, or bare chested and okay maybe they have a point uh, for that especially for a martial arts uh, expert but for a martial arts expert you would want him to hold some great poses case in point the hot toys shang chi uh, has all those double jointed elbows that really gives you a lot of flexibility in, in achieving those great poses. Um, so that's just a little annoying to me that we're missing that out here with the JCVD figure. Also pegs, they continue to be hard to put on. So you'll notice during the review that I did use putty for some um, of the hand switches just to make things easier for myself. For this line, I will need to invest in some spare pegs just so I don't have to worry about that swapping. Along the same line, I'm, I'm a broken record at this point, but we need a stand. Story that comes with him basically notes that he walks into the room where this poor guy in the punching bag is being interrogated, and he ends it by snapping his neck with a roundhouse kick. Classic Van Damme, right? Now, how are you going to recreate that? A stand would have been helpful, although the pictures for the promo shots do show him punching the guy, and I was able to recreate that um, with the figure in hand, which is nice. So you can still use that uh, effect piece with the teeth and, and pose him in that way. So it's definitely achievable. Again, with the single bend elbows, it just doesn't necessarily lend itself to be the most natural looking pose. But again, with a figure based on Jean-Claude Van Damme, how can you not let us get those kicking poses? Uh, so minor complaint maybe, I can definitely pick up a, a stand on the secondary market, but just feels like a missed opportunity here. Now, I don't want to seem like I hate the figure because it's actually just the opposite. I'm really excited to have him in hand and, and just being able to pose him um, and, and play with him a little bit. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely a figure that's a lot of fun to work with. And, and that continues the line. It definitely fits in. So it's just I know how good damn toys can be. So some of those design decisions that they did just leaves me scratching my head a little bit. But again looking at these poses and the figure you cannot deny that this figure looks incredible likeness is strong and like all the figures in the line so far it has presence and, and you know he feels like one of the more intimidating players in the in the game or in the gangsters kingdom world right now and, and he definitely feels more in line with that seven of spades which is the clive owen figure almost like a classy um senior member of the family Although the story here does, I do have to say, make it clear that Derek is almost his own branch, subcontracting to the rest of the Diamond family. And, and that is actually something great about the story. Sometimes when you read through this, th there's no rhyme or reason to what we're getting. But it does feel like the like Dan Toys or whoever's writing these are positioning this character to go up against Jason Momoa one that's upcoming. And that is an, another note. We only have that one figure on pre-order right now. Uh, and... Um, that figure is is the augustine figure hopefully we get another announcement soon because i love this line and i can't wait for it to continue on so 
That was a quick look at the Damn Toys Seven of Diamonds, aka Derek, uh, aka JCVD himself. And it turned out great and is a valuable addition to the line. Fingers crossed again, Damn Toys continues on with it. It would, it would suck if they just stopped. Uh, we know there's definitely one more still to come, and I do still have to unbox the Scott Atkins based figure. Once I do that, it might be worth recreating that uh, great knife kick scene from the movie. So what do you think about this one? And what other characters or celebrities would you like to see join this world? And as always, thanks for watching. And if you are enjoying the content, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll touch base on the next one.